Hey everybody, come follow me again. Haha, uh -huh. we're in Jeremiah. Yay, we got through Isaiah and wasn't it awesome? So we're going to start into Jeremiah. Uh, that book, uh, Jeremiah's book, is actually the longest book in the Old Testament. Not in chapters, but just as the amount of words. It's actually quite a lot. Um, and interestingly, as you read through it, and I think we cover this next week, um, at one point, what he had, um, had written down and recorded, it got taken by the king and burnt, so his a servant wrote it down again and made it longer and more complex, um, more descriptive and just more. Um, so actually, much like the 118 pages that went missing, you know, the Lord had a plan all along to make it better. So there you go. Um, it's interesting, just really interesting. I just thought that was. But anyway, let's start off in chapter 1, verse 5. Now, this is something we could probably all relate to. So chapter 1 verse 5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now you might have heard that one, because it's often used. But the interesting part there is that you can switch that word prophet out for anything that you're called to do. So right now, I'm teaching, so I could say for myself that the Lord could say to me, you know, I've before you, I formed you in your mother's stomach, in your mother's, you know, um, and before thou comest out, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a teacher, um, unto the nations or unto the people of your ward or whatever. Like you can change those words. The point is, the Lord knew you, knows you, and can see what you can become. So, what are we called to in this life? That's the question for it. Like, what are we called to in this life? Um, and how does that affect the way you live? How does that affect your journey in mortality? Do you even know what you were called to? Because it's often different than your actual church calling, although sometimes they meet up quite nicely. Um, but what are you called to? Um, ask for that. Okay, so some information on Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet, same time as Lehi. They may have even known each other. Possible. Because they're in the same area, both prophets. Lehi had his journey set, but the Lord needed a prophet to stay and go with these people, these Israelites, the, well actually they were Judah, the house of Judah, he needed to go with those people through captivity and hard times of Jerusalem. Jeremiah was called before he was born to do that work. So Lehi went through his own hard stuff as we know. It just looked different to Jeremiah's hard stuff. Jeremiah was told never to marry and not to have kids because of the hard stuff he was going through. And that if he had had a wife or children, <coughs> basically they'd be used against him. Um, and they would suffer. So, yeah, it's interesting to look at that too and think of, you know, when you say, oh, but Lehi had a really good life. It's like, yeah, but it was hard too. He had a journey on a boat. He had arguing sons. He took his family away from home. And some of the family were not happy about that. So that wasn't perfect life either. He just had a different hard. He had a sorrowing of heart hard. He had some moments where he just doubted the Lord a little um, hard. So, you know, different. But interesting that they lived at the same time. And it's it's just a way to look at that, you know, we can live at the same time now. We all have different journeys and it's all hard for each of us and we all have our own purpose. So they did that back then too. That's what we can learn from that. Um, so, yeah, we are called before we are born too. Do you know what you were called to do? For this part of my life, I am to teach and serve others, ordained for this purpose before I was born. So ask the Lord what your calling for your life is. Ask him today. Just ask him. <coughs> Have a prayer, pour it out, and ask for that answer. And it might be quite a simple thing, but it's beautiful at the same time. Or it could be that you discover something that you should be doing that you're not. Who knows, right? But ask, because he'll let you know. And remember that Christ speaks to you how you hear best. So sometimes it'll be through someone else. Sometimes it'll be through our bishops or our leaders. Sometimes it'll be to you in a way that you understand best. So, so it's going to be. Um, Ella, or President Ballard, because he's president of the Quorum of the Twelve, he said, is it, um, it is impossible to fail when you do your best and when you are on the Lord's errand. And I know it's absolutely true. Um, you can't fail. There is no failure. When you're on the Lord's errand and... You're doing it the way the Lord wants you to do. He'll make it so you don't fail. Uh, I've got so many examples of this, but <coughs> it's absolutely true. Um, and this 
the weeks come by me manual there's a nice little bit from President Nelson that I cut out and put in here um, he said that your spirit is an eternal entity the Lord said to his prophet Abraham thou was chosen before thou was born that's in Abraham 3.23 and the Lord said something similar about Jeremiah which we just read and many others like Alma in Alma 13.2-3 he even said it about you and I in Doctrine and Covenants 138.55-56 it is said about us your Heavenly Father has known you for a very long time. You, as his son or daughter, were chosen by him to come to earth at this precise time, in whatever little area you're in, at this precise time, to be a leader in his great work on earth. You were chosen not for your bodily characteristics, but for your spiritual attributes, such as bravery, courage, integrity of heart, a thirst for truth, a hunger for wisdom, and a desire to serve others. You developed some of these attributes pre-mortally. Others you can develop here on earth as you persistently seek them. And I was saying last night to my husband when we were doing um, Come Follow Me that it's it's almost like people like Jeremiah and Lehi kind of, and us too, we went to the school before we came here of like, okay, you're going to need these skills. And even though you're going to have this, you know, veil drawn across your mind so you can't remember the pre-existence, some of those skills will still come really easily to you as you seek them on earth because you've learnt them pre-mortally. So, if you find something that comes to you super easy, then perhaps your calling is around that. Who knows? The Lord does ask him. So there's a good thought for you. So, what are you called to in this life? And how does that affect the way you live mortally? How does that affect the way you live? Think about it. Alright, well that's insight number one for you. We're going to go over to chapter two and talk about living water. Alright, I'll see you there.